Luke chapter 1. Turn there with me. Luke chapter 1. Depending these next three weeks, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmas. You say, what is Christmas? Christmas is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm still looking for nativity scenes in our community. I've seen SpongeBob SquarePants out in the yards. I've seen animals out in the yards. I'm into Jesus Christ. Anybody else into Jesus this Christmas season? How many of you know Christmas is the birth of Jesus? Turn to somebody and say, Christmas is the birth of Jesus Christ. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. It's not about SpongeBob SquarePants, that's for sure. Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 27. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Don't you love virginity? Can you say amen? I had to make you say amen on that one. Don't you love virginity? Man, in our society today, it seems like you can have sex with anybody you want, but this little girl, she was a virgin. She had no sexual relationship with another man. How many of you know that's what the scriptures call for? Virginity is in. Can you say amen? It is in. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, an angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your room. You're going to bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jerry. Isn't that awesome? Let me read that again. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your room and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Come on, everybody say that name. Jesus, the name that is above all names, the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How many of you are glad that Jesus is our Savior? Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our Deliverer. Jesus is our Healer. Jesus is our Comforter. Jesus gives strength. Jesus gives wisdom. Jesus gives hope. There's a future in Jesus. There's redemption in Jesus. Guess what Christmas is about? Jesus. Come on, let's all put our hands together and thank Jesus for all that he's done. Oh, anybody love Jesus? Oh, I love Jesus. Everybody say that name, Jesus. And behold, you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Oh, I love this. Look at this. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the hand servant, handmaiden of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her, the name Jesus. Oh, I love the name Jesus. Everybody say the name Jesus. That's what the birth of, that's what Christmas is about, the birth of Jesus. But the name Jesus a lot of times is being left out of the language of believers and society's vocabulary. It has been replaced with the word God. Now again, God, of course, is a wonderful name. I use the name God. We sing about God. But it's very, very important that we understand that the emphasis of Christianity is more than just God. The emphasis of Christianity is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Sometimes I'll be listening into conversations of people, and I don't mean to be smart, but they talk about God loves me and God cares for me, and I appreciate that, and that is all true. And I believe there is one God who can be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But when this baby was born, his name was Jesus Christ. There was nothing better than to hear the name of Jesus. And here at CCWC, you're going to hear the name Jesus. We're going to preach about Jesus. We're going to sing about Jesus. We're going to worship Jesus. We're going to praise Jesus. In the children's classes, they're going to hear about Jesus. In the youth class, they're going to hear about Jesus. In the young adults, they're going to hear about Jesus. In the women's group, they're going to hear about Jesus. In the men's group, they're going to hear about Jesus. Anybody here today? In the couples group, they're going to hear about Jesus. Everybody say that name, Jesus. Jesus. But something is happening in our society and even in the church. We see that the name is disappearing, the name of Jesus. But God sent his son Jesus to die, to be born, to be buried and rise again, that we might have everlasting life and an abundant life. We must say and use the name of Jesus, which is the name above all names. I want you to write down three points, if you would please, this morning. Number one is this as an introduction. Number one is this. Do not be politically correct. 
Do not be politically correct. We are living in a society today that has become politically correct. And please understand me, it is starting to get into the church, where in many churches in the United States of America, not being negative, they won't say the word sin. They will not talk about sin. They will not say the name. They will not use the word judgment. They will not say any name unless it is something that is nice. They will not talk about Jesus. I was watching a funeral on TV this past week, and the people that were praying talked about God, said God loves us, whatever. I went to the TV and I said, would one of you please say the name that is above every name? You know why they wouldn't? There were dignitaries there. There were people there that might be offended, but I don't want to offend people. But there is no greater name than the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. (laughs) Hello, anybody here? The name Jesus. Come on, say the name of Jesus in the school system. Say the name of Jesus in the church. Say the name of Jesus at Christmas when your family is there. Say the name of Jesus, kids, when you're in school. Jesus is the name above all names. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus is the name above all names. The name of Jesus. Do not be politically correct. The word God does not offend anyone. You say, why? Because every religion uses the word God. But who is their God? When somebody says God today, I'm not sure what they're talking about. If you're involved with Islam, who are you talking about? You're talking about Allah. But I want you to know that is not the God of Christianity. That is not Jesus Christ. You see, we live in a day and age today where everybody says, yeah, God's up on the mountain and you can get there through Islam and you can get there through being a Muslim. You can get there through being a Jewish. You can get there by being a Christian. You can get there. All these roads lead to this God. But my God is Allah. I want you to know my God is not Allah and your God is not Allah. My God is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, period. Period. Who are they talking about? What about the Jehovah Witnesses? They talk about God, but it's not my God because they deny the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They think that Jesus Christ is a created being. In Scientology, their God is Zenu. In Hinduism, they have 300 million gods. The God of China is Shangdi. In Buddhism, their God is nature. Here in the United States, humanism and secularism, it's the God of self. So I want you to know, because somebody says the word God does not mean they're talking about the same God as we are talking about. That's why every born-again believer Yes, use God. Yes, talk about God. But then also talk about the greatest name that is above every name. Talk about the one who came to die on the cross and shed his blood. Talk about the one that we are celebrating here on Christmas. And how many of you understand that name? Can you say it? Oh, I didn't hear it. Can you say that name above every name? Jesus Christ. Do not be politically correct. Turn to somebody and say, stop being politically correct. Point number two. Point number two is an introduction. Using the word God only supposedly means that you are a person of faith. I want everybody to understand something this morning. I am not a person of faith. I am a born-again believer through the blood of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I want everybody to know it and understand that. I was saved. I was born again. I was redeemed through His blood on the cross. Is there anybody here who was saved and born again and redeemed through the blood of the cross, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Can you say amen? We need to understand that using the word God supposedly means that you are a person of faith. But a person of faith can be anyone and can be everyone, and they can believe in anything. The New Age people say that they're people of faith. False religions say that they are people of faith. People use it to get elected because they want the evangelical vote. How many of you know during an elections, whether it's Republican, Democrat, Green Party, whatever, everybody automatically becomes a person of faith. And so I knock on the TV, you're a person of faith. I want want you to understand and explain to me what does that exactly mean it could mean anything they could be worshiping any god they might not even worship any god at all but they are a person of faith god's people i want you to understand i am not a person of faith i believe in jesus christ the son of the living god who was buried who died who went to the cross who ascended to the right hand of the father that we might have everlasting faith everlasting life is there anybody here that's a blood-bought born-again believer in jesus christ that's what we are here And the third point, please get this down. Using the word God does not make you a born-again believer. 
Using the word God does not make anybody a born-again believer. I hear people say all the time, I believe in God. God loves me. I love God. That is wonderful. But the Bible says this, if you have God and you have the Father, but you deny the Son, you are not born again. So I'm glad for people that have God. I'm glad for people who love God. I'm glad for people that know that God loves them. But what do you think about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? 1 John chapter 2 says, if you have the Father but deny the Son, you are not born again through the blood of Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses have the Father. They do not have the Son. Mormons have the Father. They do not have the Son. Muslims have the Father, but they do not have the Son. If you don't have the Son, then you don't have the Father either, and it is a false religion. We are here today to tell you, you can have the Father, but you also need the Son, Jesus. (sighs) Hello, anybody in the house this morning? Oh, our nation needs Jesus. Our community needs Jesus. We must use the name of Jesus. We must declare the name Jesus. We must pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. We must preach His name. We must say His name. We must whisper His name. We must mention His name. We must believe in His name. We must announce His name. We must share His name. We must shout His name. Jesus! Whenever I'm asked to go someplace, and it could be a place where I might want to be politically correct, I've always told the Lord years ago, I will not be politically correct. I am not going to be obnoxious on purpose. I am not going to do something that I know that everybody doesn't want me to do on purpose. But the core belief within me is Jesus Christ. I can't do anything else. So if you're a bunch of politicians, you ask me to come and pray, the first thing I'm going to do is, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I don't do it to be obnoxious. I don't do it to offend. It's who I am. It's what I believe in. I believe in the Father. And the Bible says, come to the Father, but come to the Father in the name of Jesus. And after I finish praying, guess what I'm going to say? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we aren't going to have you back to pray. That's okay. I didn't ask to come to pray. You asked me to come to pray. In the school system, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. You can't do that. Yes, I can do that. It's my core. It's what I believe. I will not be politically correct. I will not stand in front of people and do something that they want me to do. I am going to go to them and say the name Jesus. Come on, everybody give the Lord praise. Jesus. How many of you are going to be around family at Christmas and some of them don't know the Lord? Can I see your hand lifted up in the air? I want you to pray for the meal. You say they won't like it. You don't do it on purpose. It's who you are. Father, I'm so glad for the family that is around. I'm so glad for my brothers and sisters. I love them with all of my heart. And Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we're so thankful, Lord, for our family, but we're here to celebrate Jesus Christ. We're not here to celebrate family. We're here to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray they would love the turkey, and I pray they would love the mac and cheese. Oh, I'm getting hungry. And I pray they would love the gravy. But, Father, I pray that you would touch our family. I pray that you would bring them to you. And, Father, now we're going to enjoy this time and this Christmas in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We come to you. How many of you know that will make an indent in every heart and in every life? Because Christianity is all about who? It's all about, come on, don't be scared to say Jesus. Don't be scared to pray about Jesus. Don't be scared to witness about Jesus. That was just introduction. Turn with me to the book of Acts, please, the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 3. The first thing I want to share this morning is this. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. This little baby was born in a manger. How many of you are glad Jesus was born? This little baby was born in the manger. And when they named him, they named him Jesus. How many of you know there's no power in the word Hank? There's no power in the name Bill. Cast out a demon in the name of Bill, they'll laugh at you. But how many of you know there's power in the name of Jesus? Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Here in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Anybody need a great healing in their lives this morning, physical healing? Can I see your hand lifted high up in the air? I believe it's going to happen this morning. You know what? In the name of Jesus, there's power in healing. Can't you, aren't you glad you came this morning, even with the rain? Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, that means he was born this way, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. 
So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. How many of you can relate to those guys? Silver and gold, I don't have any of that. But what I do have... I have an abundance. I put that in there myself. I have an abundance, and here's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you this. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to them. The disciples were unlearned men. The disciples were not men of great education. They had just simply been with Jesus. But here we see when this man needed a healing, the disciples said, I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I don't have a lot of education, but I'll give you what I have. And the only thing that I really have in my life is Jesus Christ. And it's the same with me. I can't give you a lot this morning. I'm not the smartest man on planet earth, but there is one thing that I can give you this morning that is greater than silver and greater than education and greater than gold and greater than job. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. Who needs that healing this morning? I want you to stand to your feet if you need that healing this morning. Stand to your feet. You say, I need a great healing this morning. And lift a hand. Oh, man, there's somebody waiting to receive. There's somebody waiting to receive. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Let's just lift a hand with these people that are standing. Let's believe the Lord for healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Since Deborah Ann prayed for needs, I'm going to have her pray for healing. We don't pray our prayers. We don't have to. How many of you know... If you expect to receive something from the Lord, the Lord will heal you in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? I just told told myself, man, it's so hard not to get up and touch them all. Dear God, we love you so much, Father. We know you are our healer. So, Father, we receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak to you affirmity, sickness, disease, cancer. And we tell you you have no authority and you must go right now in the name of what, guys? Jesus. In the name of? Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's the worst praise offering I've ever seen first service give. The Lord just healed you, Tony. I believe that. I just felt the Lord say that. The Lord just healed him. I can see the spirit of expectation on him. How many of you are glad there's power in the name of Jesus to heal Turn with me to Acts chapter 16, please. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 18. There is power in the name of Jesus over demon forces. You say, Pastor Strayer, there aren't demons today. Oh, yes, there are. Oh, yes, there are. They're coming after your kids. They're coming after you. They'll do anything they can. Oh, they're tricky. But how many of you are glad for the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus over demon forces, Acts 16, verse 16. It happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She did this for many days. But Paul, being greatly annoyed, that's New King James, I love that. It's about time that all of us got annoyed with the enemy coming in, trying to destroy our churches, trying to destroy our nation and our families. Paul got greatly annoyed. He turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Hank to come out of her. Try casting out a demon in the name of Henry. It won't work. Just try it. It won't work. You can use any name and it won't work. Look what Paul said. I command you. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to their authorities. I want you to know in Newport Ritchie and Pasco County, we have the name that is above every name. We have the name that can come against every demon force. Do you realize there's people trying to commit suicide in our area? But how many of you are glad we have authority over a spirit of suicide in the name of the Lord. Do you realize there are kids that are cutting their wrists trying to kill themselves? That's demonic. How many of you know that we have authority over every principality and power in the mighty name of Jesus? How many of you are glad that we have authority over every addiction and alcohol and abuse and drug addict in the name of Jesus? Turn to somebody and say, there's power in the name of Jesus. 
Turn with me to Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. I can't get off this. Look at this. There's power in the name of Jesus to heal. There's power in the name of Jesus to cast out demons. You say there aren't any. Yes, there are. Just by you saying there aren't shows the deception he's placed on your eyes. Open your eyes. There are demon forces that are out there, but we're not zeroing in on the demons. We're zeroing in on the authority we have in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, let's all read this verse together, no matter what version you have. One of my favorite verses in the Bible about redemption. Here we go. Let's read it together out loud. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Oh, don't you love that verse? That is a politically incorrect verse, but it's a great verse. There is salvation in no other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is power in the name of Jesus to redeem people. The name Jesus itself means Jehovah saved. The name Jesus is all about redemption and salvation. The mission of Jesus is redemption. The goal of Jesus is redemption. The name of Jesus is redemption. The death, burial, resurrection, and birth of Jesus is about redemption. The purpose of Jesus is about redemption. The Bible is about redemption. Charlene and Angie and I and Tara, we were in my office talking about evangelism and foreign missions. And we were just laughing. People were going past our office. What's going on in there? How many of you know when you're with Pastor Strayer, there's a party going on? That's for sure, a spiritual party. We're laughing and having a great time. And I looked at all of them, and I said, it's not fair. You say, what were you guys talking about? They were all giving testimonies of all the people that are getting saved, all the people that are getting born again, all the people that are being set free, all the people that are being touched by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I looked at them, and I said, it's not fair just for us to have a party. We have to go out of these four walls. We have to go out of this office because there's more people that need to be saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, redeemed, filled with the Spirit, and excited because of the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody give the Lord praise. Would you do that? The name Jesus. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. My second point this morning is this. The name Jesus declares that he is God. The name Jesus declares that he is God. How many of you are glad that you're not following a prophet? Just a prophet. You're not following just a teacher. You're not following just a healer. We're here to proclaim this morning at the birth of Jesus that he is God Almighty himself. We see in Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said to him, some say that you're John the Baptist, some say that you're Elijah, and others say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to the disciples, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, he always spoke up first, he's like me, a little mouthy at times. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Peter, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood humanity has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. To be revealed to all of us this morning, it cannot be flesh and blood. It must be revealed by our Father that is in heaven, that you are serving at the crime of Christmas, the birth of our Lord, not just a prophet, not just a tealer, teacher, not just a healer, not just a philosopher, but he is God Almighty himself. He is the Christ. The Son of the living God. So why do we want to worship any other? Any other is below that. Any other isn't on the same page in Him. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. But Pastor Strayer, He's just Son of God. You do not know your theology. Anytime Son of God is used, it refers to the fact that He is God Almighty Himself. God came in the flesh and was born and died and rose again that we might live forever. Oh, I got one on my side this morning. That's all we need. Oh, I got two. I got three. I got four. Oh, that's all I need. We got four. We'll take it. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being God. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus Christ is God. You say, Pastor, I want to learn more about it. We got a great teaching tool with Awake America 365. It's called Jesus Christ is God. Get it for Christmas. Go back there, and Need will give you a discount this morning if you get it. Matthew 16, we don't really want the money. We just want you to get the information. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Isn't Jesus wonderful? He's the best counselor. Look at that. He's counselor. 
What's the next name for Jesus? What's the next name for Jesus? And Prince of Peace. Look what the Bible says. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. The Bible says that God, the Father, and Jesus Christ are one in essence, one in the core. And since Jesus Christ is God, how many of you believe that Jesus Christ is God Almighty Himself? Since Jesus Christ is God, the Bible says, do not take His name in vain. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7, please. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7. Does everybody here love the name of Jesus? Oh, I love the name of Jesus. Since Jesus is God, we are not to take his name in vain. As you're looking at Exodus 27, the way that we use a person's name says a great deal about what you think of them. When we dishonor the Lord's name, we are dishonoring the Lord himself. And here in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7, this is one of the Ten Commandments, verse chapter 7, this commandment is good because it comes over into the New Testament. Look what it says, you... You say, who is you, pastor? Everybody who's born again through the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So every born-again believer shall not take the name of the Lord our God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. You say, what does that mean, pastor? It means this, is that the Lord, when we misuse his name, he's going to whoop us. He's going to chastise us. How many of you are glad the believer is not under the judgment of God, but how many of you know he whoops us once in a while? Can you say amen? What does the word take his name in vain mean? It means not to misuse his name. Not to misuse his name. How can we misuse his name? We can misuse his name by cussing and swearing and foul and filthy talk, polluted and distasteful language, profanity and vulgarity. I remember when I was working in the restaurant business, there was a guy behind the grill. He was having a tough day, and he said the name Jesus Christ, but he didn't say it in a nice way. But when I heard him say it, of course, I'm a pastor and I'm pastoring a church. I went behind the grill, and I said, I heard you use the name Jesus. Are you a born-again believer in the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I love to hear the name of Jesus in the restaurant. He said, get out of here and leave me alone. But I said, sir, be careful of that name and using that name that way because guess what? The name of Jesus is a holy name, is a righteous name, is the name above all names. We can't misuse it. The second way that we can misuse his name is that we can misuse his name in some irreverent way. Here's a way that we can be irreverent. Hey, he's the man upstairs. He is not the man upstairs. He is God Almighty himself. Hey, he's a higher power. He is not a higher power. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. His name is above all names. What is it? We can say the name of Jesus Christ in an irreverent way. I hear people say this all the time. Maybe I'm being picky. Maybe I'm too old fogey. But I hear people say all this all the time. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. I heard somebody say that once was a little kid. And all of a sudden I went to him and said, no, you can say, oh, my goodness. It's not, oh, my God. You see, the name of Jesus is so holy. The name of Jesus is so righteous. The name of Jesus is above every name. And it's time that we as born-again believers only do one thing, to honor his name and not you misuse his name and praise his name and value his name and lift up his name and worship his name. He is not the man upstairs. He is Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. He is God who was holy and righteous and I can't believe at times we're not all on our knees just when we say the name Jesus. I can guarantee all of us when we all die and stand before the Lord, we're not going to say this, hey, dude, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. We're not going to do any of that. Oh, you are the man upstairs. We're not going to do that either. And you're not going to do this, oh, my God. You know what you're going to do? You aren't going to say anything. You're just going to bow before him and you're going to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. And we're going to cry out to him, you're righteous, you're holy, you're good, forgive me. You're so awesome and you're so wonderful and you're the counselor and you're the bread of life. Guess what? On earth, as it is in heaven, we don't have to wait to get to heaven to revere the name that is above every name and his name is Jesus. Let's start doing it here on earth. Turn to somebody and say, that was good preaching. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Can you take one more? Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. The last point is this. The name of Jesus is above every name. 
Chapter 2, verse 5, let this attitude be in you. Some of your translations will use the word mind, but the best translation is attitude. Let this attitude be in all of us as born-again believers, which was also in Christ. How many of you know we need to have the same attitude that Jesus had? Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. You say, why? Because he was God. He made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of a slave, a bondservant. And coming into the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. Please write down in your notes, if you would. It means he has put him to the highest point, to the highest point and on his own page. So how many of you know the Lord Jesus Christ is at the highest point above everyone that's been born? Every God is at the highest point, and he's on his own page because there's nobody who can match him. God the Father elevated him above everyone and gave him a name which is above every name. And I love the Greek here because it says where it gave him the name. In the Greek, it emphasizes the name, the name. It's not like Bill. It's not like Henrietta. It's not like Fred. It's not like Sam. It's not like Rebecca has given him the name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. You say, Pastor Schreier, I'm not bowing. Oh, yes, you're going to bow to the Lord. Every knee shall bow of those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth. Look at that. Three groups are going to bow. Those of us who are in heaven, those who are going to live on earth, and those who are under the earth, even in hell, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to verbally confess out loud that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Have you ever talked to people before and they say, I, don't, I know I'm going to hell. I don't care. I'm going to be down there with my girls and the fast cars and we're going to drink booze down there and do all of this, guess what they're going to do? They're going to do none of that, and they're going to bow. Jesus Christ, when he went down into hell, they all bowed at the last days. Everybody's going to bow. Those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, every knee shall bow. At what name? At the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is above everyone and everything. The name of Jesus is above every sickness. It's above alcoholism. It's above drug addiction. It's above every situation. It's above every circumstance. It's above every ruler. It's above every president. It's above every prime minister. It's above the pope. It's above every religious figure. It's above the church. It's above the armed forces. It's above all military might. It's above all TV and Hollywood personalities. It's above all angels. It's above every government official. It's above all the media outlets. It's above all the news commentators. I'm not done yet. It's above all authorities. It's above all demons. It's above the devil. It's above all people. It's above all gods. It's above all religions. It's above everything. It's above everyone. The name of Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Friedrich Nietzsche. Have you ever heard him before? I had to read his stuff in college or I was going to flunk. I did read it. Don't agree with one word of it. Even the word and I don't agree with. He's an atheist philosopher. Here's one of his quotes. I condemn Christianity. I bring against the Christian church the most terrible of all the accusations that an accuser has ever had in his mouth. The Christian church has left nothing untouched by its depravity and has turned every value into worthlessness. If Jesus would have lived longer, he himself would have repudiated his own doctrine. I only have one thing to say. Every knee shall bow. Anybody ever heard of the Beatles? John Lennon. Christianity will end. It will go. It will vanish and it will shrink. I needn't argue with that fact. I'm right and I will be proven right. The Beatles are more popular than Jesus will ever be. I got news for John. He was assassinated. And when he stood before the Lord, guess what Jesus said? Bow. I have not ended. Christianity has not ended. Depart from me, for I never knew you. He ended. Yeah, he was crying. <laughs> Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. And they will say this, that you 
our master. You are Lord. You are sir. You're the one in control. You are the ruler. You are the boss. You are the master of everything. I yield to you to the glory of God the Father, and I give thanks to Jesus Christ. How many of you are glad that when God came to earth in the form of man, they called his name? Jesus. 